That's good. Uh, most likely, you're going to need a loan, though, um, which means you have come to the right place. Today, we're going to be looking at the loanable funds market. Uh, in the loanable funds market, we're taking the same basic concepts of a supply and demand marketplace for any market and I'm looking at it specifically for loanable funds. Loanable funds is one of the main graphs that you will know have, have to know how to draw um, and label and manipulate um, for the AP macroeconomics test. Uh, the loanable funds market, just like any supply and demand, we're going to be looking at price versus quantity. Uh, in this case, because there are loans, the price of a loan is interest. Now, uh, because it's a loan over time, uh, banks uh, will be concerned about real interest rates, not nominal. Uh, remember that real interest is found by nominal minus expected inflation. Uh, that will always come up, so don't forget that, that equation. So, uh, the loanable funds market is where savers and borrowers uh, exchange funds, the quantity of loanable funds, at the real interest rate. Um, so, we're going to be looking at how banks supply loanable funds through savings, not just households, but all kinds of ways, and how consumers borrow money, not just uh, households, but all marketplaces. So who demands loans? Uh, you and I do uh, for college or for buying a house or a car or using your credit cards. Uh, as consumers, we borrow money all the time. And so anytime we're doing that, we're demanding a loan. Uh, and just like on a supply and demand graph, uh, consumers like low interest rates because it means we're paying back less and we do not like high interest rates, which means we would pay back more money over time. Uh, so our demand line will still have a downward slope just like it did on a regular supply and demand graph. Uh, so households borrow money, uh, businesses borrow money, they borrow money to invest in themselves, uh, they'll take out loans to expand their businesses. Uh, the government borrows money anytime they uh, spend more than they take in, it's called a budget deficit, they have to borrow money to, take, to pay that off. And then the foreign sector, foreign companies, or foreigners might come into American banks and borrow money because we have lower interest rates. That'll be important when we look at foreign exchange markets later. Uh, so that's borrowing. Now, banks have to have money to loan these uh, people, these different consumer groups, loans. Um, and that's where savings comes in. When we talk, looked at time value money and balance sheets, uh, banks can only give out loans uh, a percentage of their demand deposits. Uh, so they have to have excess reserves. They have to have people willing to put money into the bank and leave it there so they can loan it out. Uh, so who saves money? Well, households. Uh, you probably should have a savings account of some kind. Uh, the government saves money when they have a surplus. It does happen from time to time. Businesses will save money. Uh, it's called retained earnings. They'll keep money around. And then foreign uh, companies and uh, foreign citizens will come in and save money in our banks as well if we have higher interest rates. So that means that we ha would have a upward supply curve. Uh, so, so one quick little side note, uh, the loanable funds graph is also can be seen as the bonds market. That'll be a separate video though. So uh, what would cause the loanable funds graph to move? Well, anything that would change our willingness to borrow money, uh, that would change demand, that would cause demand to shift to, to the right for an increase or left for the decrease, or anything that would change our willingness to supply loans or save, uh, again, right for an increase, left for a decrease. But first, let's look at how to draw the graph. What is the uh, quantity? The So what does the loanable funds market look like? Like this. It's a uh, supply and demand graph. Uh, so take all those concepts of drawing the supply and demand graphs that you've been doing in class and just put them to a very specific market. Um, our price is real interest rates uh, because this is the bank, the interest rate that banks will charge borrowers and it is the interest rate that banks will give savers. So instead of price, we have real interest rate 
quantity is just quantity of loanable funds. It's how much loanable funds are available at each and every interest rate. Demand is downward sloping because the fact that consumers don't like high interest rates, we have to pay back more, and as interest rates decrease, we are willing and able to take out more and more loans because it's cheaper money. Uh, supply is the other way. Savers, we like high interest rates. I'll put more money in the bank when interest rates are higher because I can get a greater return on that investment than when interest rates are lower. Uh, just like in a supply and demand market, when there is uh, an equilibrium point where supply and demand e are equal, we have a equilibrium real interest rate and an equilibrium quantity of loanable funds. And again, just like a supply and demand market, these curves can shift. To the right would be an increase, to the left would be a decrease. What would cause the graphs to move? Uh, so let's look at demand first. Anything that would impact consumers willing to borrow. Uh, so if a change in household borrowing would cause the demand line to move. If it's an increase in borrowing, uh, taking out more loans for houses, cars, college, what have you, that would shift the demand curve to the right. Obviously, a decrease would be a shift to the left. A change in capital investment. Uh, how a business sees the future of uh, the economy will impact their willingness to invest uh, in themselves and in machinery and in products. The government, a big borrower because of our budget deficit, uh, any increase or decrease in the budget deficit would impact the demand for loanable funds. Um, and a minor one, just so that we talk about it, foreign direct investment, a increase or decrease in foreigners' uh, willingness to borrow here. This is more of a tie-in from foreign exchange to this graph and then back to foreign exchange. Uh, so don't forget about this link. Uh, but for this graph alone, the big three are budget deficit, uh, the government spending, capital investment, how businesses are willing to borrow, and then just general household investment. So if it's an increase in any of these, a shift to the right. And if they decrease, it will be a shift to the left. Supply is impacted by the same four groups, uh, except for from their savings perspective. Uh, anything that would impact household savings, remember banks have to have savings in order to give loans, that's the direct supply. So if we are willing to save more or less, that would impact uh, the supply. Now it can't be interest rates because that's like price on supply and demand. So something other than interest rate would impact this here. This is our expectations of the economy. If we're in a recession, our job future, things like that. Uh, consumers, when we think the economy is doing bad, will tend to save more money. Uh, businesses, retained earnings, Kind of the same concept. When the economy is not doing well, they'll hold on to their savings rather than invest in themselves because they're not sure what future value will be there. So that anytime they would hold on to their savings, it's called retained earnings. Put more money into the bank, increasing the supply of loans. Uh, budget surpluses by the government. When they have extra money, they put it in the Federal Reserve. That is the banker's bank. That uh, is the bank of the United States government. And so that it would increase the savings of all banks and increase the supply of all loans. Uh, lastly, foreign uh, direct spending. Uh, when money is coming in, it's called capital inflow. When they're taking it out, it would be capital outflow. So capital inflow would be an increase in supply. Capital outflow would be a decrease in supply. So again, we have households, savings, businesses with the retained earnings, the government with budget surpluses, and capital inflow and outflow all affecting the supply of loanable funds. Uh, Alright, some final thoughts. Uh, remember that the loanable funds market is used to help determine the real interest rate. So any change in the demand or supply, which would then change the equilibrium point, will change the real interest rate. Uh, you will be asked to come back to this graph a lot on the AP test to determine real interest rates um, and it's tied back to this graph. Uh, the loanable funds market is the market for savings and borrowing. We've talked a lot about that. Uh, any changing, changes in saving, savings or borrowing will therefore change real interest rates. Uh, when the government does physical policy, 
Uh, we haven't talked about this in my class yet. Uh, it's a different video. Uh, when the government changes physical policy, it will change this graph because physical policy changes government uh, budget surpluses or budget deficits. Uh, and then a change in the real interest rate will change gross private investment. Um, again, that's a link to another graph as well. So this graph in and of itself uh, is very important, but it's also a key link to other graphs within the AP macro rule. Uh, we will come back to this graph when we look at physical versus monetary policy. Uh, so stay tuned.